What's up, YouTube? You're watching Faith by Flight. My name is Cole. I'm going to give you a brief overview on how to read your MCG. This is just going to be a down and dirty uh, demonstration of how to go through this for your flights in primary, advanced, so on and so forth. Because once you know how to read this, you know how to read everything else. So this is your master curriculum guide. This is going to tell you what you're going to be doing for each of your flights, which means you have zero excuse for showing up unprepared for your flights. This is the general instruction, why it was put out and what it's replacing. This is your table of contents. Some advice with this. Uh, you have different sections here. I would definitely advise getting one of those half sticky notes and putting them in between each of these. So for contacts, put a tab, instruments, put a tab, nav, put a tab. And then once you finish with a block of training, take however many pages it is and fold them in half uh, into the actual MCG itself. That way they're out of the way and you can see how far you're progressing and what you need to start looking forward to. So the general instructions here is gonna give you the general flow. It's gonna give you some charts, graphs on what needs to be completed in order to do other blocks of training. It'll give you uh, the unsat requirements, what to do if you've been out of the plane for so many days, and then all other requirements related to your flying so contact training this is the first phase of training you're going to go into after doing ground school and uh, sims here so this is your contact stage maneuver item file which will here on out be referred to as MIF because that is how everybody's going to talk about it so MIF is this number right here whatever number is inside of the box is your MIF for the block so for your general knowledge and procedures at the end of your contact 2100 block which will be your 2103 you need to have a three plus or greater or a three or greater in order to pass. So if you get a two, you're below MIF. If you get a four, you're above MIF. If you get a three, you are at MIF. Pretty simple. So the numbers here give a brief overview of what these mean. Basic air work. So you see this is a one for the 2100 block, which means it is a demonstration item for the instructor themselves. It is not going to be graded. A two means you need a lot of help with whatever it is, but you have an idea of what's going on. A three is you have the idea, you can execute it somewhat capably, but you need a little bit of help with it. A four is you can do it by yourself without any coaching. Five, if you get a five, you're doing absolutely fantastic. You are above the expectation for the block that you are in. So that is how you read the numbers. The pluses are graded items. If they don't have a plus next to them, they are not graded, but they can be graded. So look out for that in the future. So this is just going to go through every single flight, what you need by the end of the block. And then we're actually going to scroll down here, get to an actual flight. Uh, we're going to go to the contact 4100 block here. So this is your entire block of flights. And as you can see, it's pretty extensive in what's expected. So there's syllabus notes, read through this because it has some very important stuff in here. Like a minimum of five spins shall be successfully completed in the C41 to C4400 block of training, which means by the end of this contact block of training, you're gonna need five spins. Not at the end of the contact 41, but at the end of the contact 44 block. So make sure you get your five spins and then also, this little fun bit right here, Contact 4103 is a proficiency advanced trigger event, which means if you're doing really well by Contact 4103, which is your third flight in the block, you can get advanced through training, which will increase your uh, multiplier, which will also increase your NSS, which will allow you to possibly get what you want at the end. So... Moving on from this, your special syllabus requirements. Sometimes these are just overarching principles uh, that you need to get done during the entire block, or they can be broken down into flights as this one is. So we're going to go to the 4103 and just read through this. So instructor demonstrates scat safe maneuver. So I would probably know what your scat safe maneuver is because you're probably going to need to talk about it and you're probably going to have to have an idea of what the heck is going on while your instructor demonstrates it so that you can possibly uh, do it yourself. So if you go down here to C4103, these are your discuss items. 
This is what you're going to be talking about before your flight. So this is your briefing time. Whenever you go in there, your instructor is going to ask you questions on your crosswind takeoff approach landing, landing irregularities, OCF, and what do you know, the scat safe maneuver, and then contact unusual attitudes. So you need to know every item in this as well as your previous items that you have discussed in this block in order to pass your brief because you may get asked about certain things here. So there is no excuse to show up unprepared because everything is laid out here, cut and dry. There is no gray area. This is extremely black and white. So just take a peek at this before you go fly. I would probably look at this uh, two to three flights in advance. So if you're on C-40-101, I would have an idea of what the 102 and the 103 have in store for you. And then I'd, ha I'd start getting a general like skim overview of what the heck's coming up in C-40-104. So the block MIF, this is the end of the block. C-40-104 is the last flight in this block. And these numbers are what is expected of you at the end of this block so your general knowledge and procedures need to be at a three plus level which i explained earlier your emergency procedures need to be at a three plus level but your eps uh, should definitely be at a four or a five at this point if you want to do really well in the syllabus overall your emergency procedures should be learned before you even get to your first sim uh, there's not very many in the t6 they're very easy to learn I would just get them down along with your NATOPS brief because that will go into uh, head work and general knowledge and procedures. You can get a four or five on your very first block uh, that will pay dividends in the future. So this is gonna go through every single maneuver in the block that you're going to be expected to perform for the 4100 block and tell you what you need. But what I would do is I would take a look at this before you do your first flight and get an idea of the procedures for all of these different maneuvers here. Slow flight, power on stalls, landing pattern stall, power off, so on and so forth. That way, if you're doing really well in the 4102 flight and your instructor wants to do something a little more dynamic, you may be like, hey, let's go ahead and do a spin. What are your procedures for a spin? You spill them out while you're in the plane. All right, cool. Let's do it. You do it. Bam. Easy four or five right off the bat. And then your multiplier goes up. Your NSS goes up. You get what you want at the end. Uh, hopefully you're seeing a pattern here. So that is the extreme basics on how to read the MCG. It is pretty much how to read the MCG all in all, because every single flight block is going to be laid out the exact same. You're going to have your notes, your requirements, discuss items, block myth. Every single time, it's going to tell you what you need. Again, no excuses to show up unprepared. It tells you everything you need. Once you can read this and master it, uh, you'll be able to master pretty much everything else in your syllabus. So thanks for watching. Uh, that is all I have for reading the MCG. Hopefully this was helpful to you as a brief little overview. I will have a couple more videos coming out in the future in regards to the training pipelines themselves. Thanks for watching. I'll see you in the next one.